Hi, and welcome to Crash Course Cryptozoology. Today, I'm going to be talking about a cryptid I think is very uh, different from mainstream cryptids, and that's another reason that I think that it is uh, very interesting to talk about. Um, I'm talking today about the Jersey Devil. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with the concept of the Jersey Devil, allow me to explain. The legend of the Jersey Devil goes back centuries. Uh, the alleged origin of the Jersey Devil, this comes from a, I guess you can call it an urban legend of sorts. So, of course, I'm not sure if this is exactly how events transpired. It's a very far-fetched story. This is definitely, this, this fits into the urban legend category. Of course, that doesn't mean that it's not true. I'm someone who likes to think that nothing is impossible. But I myself, I myself am not too sure about this story in particular. The legend goes that the Leeds family, uh, which was obviously a large family living in New Jersey during the 1700s, they had 12 children, and the mother, uh, often referred to as just Mother Leeds, was pregnant with the 13th child. Now, there's not really given a reason why she did this, uh, but according to the legend, she cursed the 13th child, and when it was born, uh, it transformed into the Jersey Devil, escaped the house, and has been terrorizing New Jersey ever since. Now, before I go, I just want to say the reason that I would say this story is far fetched is because, quite simply, if the Jersey Devil is real, it is an animal of sorts. Uh, it is a living thing of sorts. And all living things that we're aware of, uh, at least on Earth, run on a system where they require a species to survive, obviously. Uh, I talked about this in my previous video on extinct cryptids, where a species, there's not just one Loch Ness Monster, if the Loch Ness Monster does exist, there's not just one Bigfoot, if Bigfoot exists, because there needs to be a, there needs to be multiple individuals in that species in order for the species to survive. So if the Jersey Devil is real, it's more like the Jersey Devils are real. Just putting my input in there, that's my opinion. Anyway, though, the strange thing is, is that this creature, if it is real, is possibly the strangest creature living on Earth. Uh, the Jersey Devil traditionally is described as a horse-like creature with the wings of a bat on its shoulder blades, the horns of a ram on its skull, and a tail clad in scales similar to a snake. And yes, this creature is purported to fly. Again, that's a very strange combination, and looking at that from a biological and anatomical point of view, uh, that would be a very hard creature to describe, to describe where its origins are, where its evolutionary uh, standpoint is, how it got from one creature to this. It's a very perplexing case, and that's what makes it such a different creature in cryptozoology from other cryptids thing is is that sightings persist to the modern day and you are going to hear a lot of sightings that are called jersey devil sightings uh but are more like a bigfoot sighting or more like maybe in a ufo sighting of sorts um and the reason for that is because the the name the jersey devil has become synonymous with basically any cryptid or strange going on i guess you could call it uh that happens in the new jersey area it's just become a very popular term but speaking for the traditional jersey devil it is true that, um, even historically, sightings persist to this day. There was a Civil War sighting. Um, I'll show the sketch of that right here. It's a very famous image of the Jersey Devil that was sketched, uh, I believe, from that sighting. There was a battle going on, and the soldier, a group of soldiers saw this creature apparently flying overhead. They fired a cannon at it, and according to their story, the creature was undamaged by the cannonball and kept on flying. Now, that in itself is a very, very strange tale. And, um, you know, if it is true, again, I don't really know how I would receive something like that. But it's very interesting. And the thing is, is that a, creep, a cryptid like that is still reported, again, to the modern day. And uh, that brings us to the points that I have to present to you today that may be making a case for a creature like this existing. The first case that we have is, uh, it's almost more of an honorable mention, really. Because I don't want this, to, I wouldn't want this in my mind to be all that I go on for the Jersey Devil's existence because there's not a whole lot of information that I could find on it online. So definitely take this one with a grain of salt because this could very well be a hoax. Uh, and I do say that based on the fact that there is very little information on it online. 
Well, there is a photograph to go along with this, not of the Jersey Devil per se, but what could be the aftermath of a Jersey Devil attack. That may sound way out there, but bear with me. Take a listen. Allegedly, this photograph uh, was taken of an event that occurred in the 1960s in Winslow, New Jersey. And what it depicts, and what it does seem to depict, is the carcass, the mutilated carcass, I should say, of a cow sitting or hanging from the top of a telephone pole wire. Now, that is just weird within itself, but here's the thing. A lot of residents of Winslow, New Jersey, according to the story around this photograph, a lot of residents in Winslow claimed that this was the work of the Jersey Devil. Now, when we look at this, we're definitely kind of scratching our heads here because there's a few weird things about this. Um, this isn't something done by normal predators. We can say that for certain. It almost is uh, indicative of a wild predator, though. Perhaps not flying wild predators. Well, actually, yes, flying wild predators. But the one I'm thinking of is the one that I jumped to when I first saw this, uh, which was sometimes big cats will actually climb up small telephone poles uh, with their prey, and they'll either eat them up there or they'll just leave them there. I've never been sure why this happens. I tend to think that it could be an instinctual thing because a lot of big cats wait for their prey in the trees. That's how a lot of them hunt. So it could be something like that. I'm not sure. But the thing you'll notice, I'll show the photograph of the big cat kill right here. That's a much smaller telephone pole than the one that we're looking at in the alleged Jersey Devil photograph. This one in the Jersey Devil photograph uh, is much taller. It's a full size telephone pole. Uh, it, you know, it towers over people, it towers over the cars, it towers over some of the houses. It's, it's a very high location, and I doubt that a big cat would drag an entire cow up the telephone pole and somehow get the ability to leave it on the wire without damaging itself and then leaving, or maybe even eating it up there. I don't know if the carcass was mutilated before or after it got up there. I'm not even sure if the carcass is real per se. Another thought that might come to mind is the thought of, okay, maybe this is a bird. That's got to be one big bird. And come to think of it, that would have to be one big wild cat to drag a cow up that telephone pole wire. If that is the carcass that we're looking at, this could very well be a different animal. It is hard to tell. But if we're to believe the story, the bird that would have had to do this would be a fairly large bird. Uh, definitely a bird that we might not know about yet. So if this photograph is real, we have a large flying creature that's brought this cow up to the telephone pole wire and either left it there or mutilated it or eaten it or something like that. And it will very likely be a flying creature that we are, as of right now, unaware of. That alone raises some weird flags, and I'd like to know what you guys think about this. Now that we're past this honorable mention of evidence, however, we're going to go to the bigger piece of evidence that, in my mind, is the most jarring that exists for the Jersey Devil. Uh, this, is, this one involves a sighting, and again, there are no photographs of the alleged creature. Very little photographic evidence exists that uh, purports to show a Jersey Devil, and I may show those uh, in another video, but this one will focus more on this case, uh, because I find this case even more compelling than any photographs I've allegedly any alleged photographs that I've seen. This takes place in January of 2004. According to the sighting, the people involved are the Winkleman family, who are residents of New Jersey. Um, the story goes that Lori Winkleman, who is the mother of the family, walked out with her son, Glenn Jr. The rest of the family had gone inside because the snow had started to fall. And um, they had gone out because the Christmas lights were still on. Now, according to Lori, the lights were left on because there is an eerie feel at night around the area, uh, which in itself is a whole other topic that could relate to the Jersey Devil. Animals and we are animals. We tend to know when we're being watched. But that's beside the point. So they go out there and they go to turn the lights off. She's going to unplug the lights when she notices that her son, Glenn Jr., is not well. He's pointing to something up in the trees. He's looking at it. He's staring at it. He's pointing to something up in the trees. He's staring at it, and he's trying to say something, but he just can't get the words out of his mouth. He's stuttering, one could say. I looked at my son who was standing right in front of me, and his face was just terrified, and he was, like, making garbled noises, pointing up. 
So Lori says that she looked up and she saw a massive creature sitting perched in a tree branch. Being a mother, she wants to get her and her child out of there immediately, so they start running back to the house. According to their story, as they're running back to the house, they hear this thing leave the tree, and apparently it swoops over them. They can feel it swoop over them. So it's a flying creature. And as they get to the porch of the house, they hear it land on the roof. They hear what they refer to as metallic clacking sounds coming down the roof, uh, which would indicate that whatever animal this is, is coming down the roof towards them. They get inside before whatever is on the roof comes off of it, and they spend, the, the whole family, not just them, the whole family allegedly spent a sleepless night. And in the morning, the husband, Glenn, went out, Glenn Sr., went out, and he comes back in, and he tells Lori that there are hoof prints in the fresh snow on the roof of the house. They go out there. There are, in fact, hoof prints on the roof of the house in the fresh fallen snow. They take photographs of these hoof prints. They take measurements. Uh, the measurements I'll get to in a little bit. Now, eventually they contact the police uh, and the regional wildlife experts get involved and apparently, and they cannot make heads or tails of the tracks. They just can't. They don't know how to identify this particular hooved animal. And here's the reason why they couldn't. They were kind of frightened for us because the, the footprints were nine inches by five inches and four feet apart and two-legged. So there, are, there were hoof prints five by nine inches in size on the roof of a house and they were spaced apart by four feet. He saw the tracks on the roof. He said he would estimate the size to be about, like, I believe it was two to 400 pounds of whatever it was. Um, he said about the size of a large bear. Uh, he then asked me if I had guns, and where I'm from, people don't have guns in the house. And I said no, and he just said maybe you should get some. They've actually advised the Winkelmans to carry guns with them from that point onwards. So here's the thing about these tracks. Wildlife experts couldn't identify them. There is a sighting that supports the idea of an animal like this being on the roof. The fact that they're on the roof alone is perplexing. And the size and stride of these tracks is very strange because they're huge hooves for one thing. And second, they're spaced apart by four feet, which indicates a bipedal creature. Uh, for those of you who may not know, a bipedal creature is a creature that stands on two legs. And according to modern science, uh, as it is currently accepted, we as humans are the only current living creatures that naturally are bipedal. There are some creatures that are capable of it, like chimpanzees and gorillas, but naturally we're the only ones that do it. So what is a hooved animal that is pretty big in size doing on the roof of a house in the fresh snow walking on its two legs. This could be a hoax. That was my first thought. This could be a hoax. But then I thought about it more and I realized that, and, and still may be a hoax, don't get me wrong, but there's something strange about it and that's that there's no indication. If this is fresh snow, then we'd see other marks of it being a hoax. We would see uh, marks of a ladder left behind. We would see possible other footprints. We wouldn't see this clean track of hooves just going down the snow, making it look like, quite frankly, something came onto the roof, something walked across the roof, and then something left the roof without touching the ground. We also have the fact that it fooled, if it's a hoax, it's fooled wildlife experts. Now, again, this could still be a hoax. There have been hoaxes that have been pretty good before, but the fact that wildlife experts couldn't say that it was a hoax, and they instead advised the family to carry guns with them, that indicates to me that something very strange happened that night in January 2004. Over 10 years have passed since then, and no one's come forth saying it's a hoax. No one has come forward saying anything really about it. This is one of those mysteries that isn't really talked about a whole lot, uh, not just within cryptozoology, but within mainstream science in general. There are a lot of mysteries that I hope to cover on this channel that are very much like this. There are cases that are very, very perplexing that just aren't being talked about for some reason. And quite frankly, if we don't have a really good hoax here, 
we have a flying hooved animal that walks on two legs living somewhere in New Jersey. And when I think of that, only one image comes to my mind. And I'm pretty sure it came to yours as well. But let me know what you guys think about these cases. I think they are very interesting. I think they're very perplexing. And I find it strange that no one really talks about them a whole lot. Let me know what you guys think about these, because I'd like to hear your opinions. Uh, do you think it's a hoax? Do you think they're both hoaxes? Do you think they're both real? What do you think these say for the Jersey Devil? Do you believe in it? Do you not? Again, let me know. Until then, see you next time.